Hello and welcome to this presentation on interdisciplinary research in the context of the UKRI Cross Research Council Responsive Mode Pilot Scheme. My name is Alex Amy and I'm the Strategic Lead for Inter Interdisciplinary Responsive Mode at UKRI. I'm being joined by Catherine Lyle, an independent consultant on interdisciplinary research and Emerita Professor of Science and Public Policy at the University of Edinburgh. The aims of this presentation are to provide potential applicants to the scheme with a better understanding of interdisciplinary research and how this relates to the Cross Research Council Responsive Mode Scheme and what good interdisciplinary research look like, looks like and what assessors will be looking for in your applications. Further details on applying to round two will be provided in the call text and webinars when it is launched in September. I will start off by providing a brief overview of the scheme and what is in scope and briefly touch on how applications to the scheme are assessed. Catherine will then go into more detail unpicking the definition of interdisciplinary research and good practices for integration of disciplines that you will need to consider when developing your proposals and also what assessors will be looking for in your applications. She'll then be sharing some of the key learnings we have from the assessment of the round one outline applications and focus on what we mean by reciprocity which was something that many outline applications did not manage to demonstrate in round one. The UKRI Cross Research Council Responsive Made Scheme is aimed at supporting new interdisciplinary ideas emerging from the research community. This is a pilot scheme allowing us to assess demand and to test and refine our processes for assessing these types of applications. We are developing and delivering the scheme in real time and we will be working with the research community to rapidly learn and apply lessons from the first round for the benefit of the second round. Applications must have disciplines that come from at least two research councils. Those applications that fit within a single research council remit are ineligible as there is a clear alternative funding opportunity through the individual research council responsive mode schemes that can support these. And I will talk a bit more about this later. We've been allocated 65 million to pilot the scheme over two rounds of funding. Projects will be supported for up to two years with a full economic cost of between 200,000 and 1.2 million and with UKRI funding 80% of that full economic cost. So we anticipate making around 36 awards in each round. Full details of both the outline and the full stage for round one are still on the UKRI funding finder. We are just completing round one, and this presentation is part of the pre-announcement for round two. It is a two-stage process, and the outline stage for round two will run from September 2024 to April 2025, and the full stage will then run from April to November 2025. We will be holding a webinar when we launch the scheme in September, and there's a choice of two dates, the 5th and the 11th of September, and you can register for these webinars via the pre-announcement page on the UKRI funding finder. The scheme aims to support novel projects that transcend, combine or significantly span disciplines and have the potential to lead to breakthrough ideas and collaborations. It will support research that can only be addressed through interdisciplinary collaboration and through combining disciplines will create new approaches to research questions and methodologies. For applications to be interdisciplinary, there needs to be co-creation or co-design of the research idea and there has to be some reciprocal benefits across the disciplines. The aim of the call is to support these, those research ideas where there is no clear lead research council for responsive mode funding, where applications significantly span two or more research council remits. So just providing a bit more context to what is in scope for this scheme relative to the individual council responsive mode schemes, UKRI funds interdisciplinary research both within those individual research council remit boundaries and funds research across research council boundaries through the Cross Research Council Remit Agreement. Applications that fall within the remit of an individual research council are ineligible for this scheme, as there are already funding mechanisms in place to support these proposals through the current council mechanisms. Applications to this scheme must span the remits of at least two research councils, and therefore applications that are interdisciplinary by combining disciplines that are covered by a single council remit are inel ineligible for this scheme. So applications will be considered out of scope for the Cross Research Council Responsive Made Scheme where all the research areas outlined in an application fall within the remit of a single council 
or that the level of the second council remit is so low, i.e. less than 10%, that the primary council would not consult another research council for joint assessment and award of the project. So we will be consulting our colleagues in the councils as subject matter experts to review applications at this stage. And UKRI will reject applications at the outline stage if they do not meet this threshold to be in scope for the scheme. If your application spans the remits of at least two research councils, it still needs to be researched. That can only be delivered through an interdisciplinary approach. Often the terms interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary can be interchanged. So I want to provide some clarity on the differences that would be considered in and out of scope for this scheme. Interdisciplinary research has significant interactions between disciplines and or will move beyond established disciplinary foundations in applying or integrating research approaches from different disciplines. There will be integration of disciplines across and within work packages rather than individual disciplines addressing separate work packages. If your application's work packages can be easily separated into the remits of different research councils, your application may not be considered as interdisciplinary by the assessors and it may be better to apply for funding through an individual research council responsive mode programme using the cross-council remit agreement. Other features of interdisciplinary research is that there will be reciprocal research benefits for all the disciplines involved and co-creation of the project framework. And Catherine will go into this in a bit more detail shortly. Multidisciplinary research is where researchers work independently with their disciplines and there's little or no integration of disciplines that could result in distinct outputs. Work packages are discrete and discipline specific rather than integrating disciplinary knowledge. Some disciplines may not need to be included from the start and not involved in the project framing or the research to design. In cases like this, there are clear, clear asymmetries of leadership within the project due to the project objectives. In these cases, the project is considered as multidisciplinary and is not in scope for this scheme. There are various definitions for transdisciplinary research, but it is often defined as research that transgresses, ba transgresses boundaries between disciplinary knowledge or integrates different bodies of knowledge and actively co-creates knowledge between academic and societal partners, such as policymakers or business. It is possible for an application to be both interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary, where it involves non-academic stakeholders, but to be in scope for this scheme, an application has to be interdisciplinary. An application that is only transdisciplinary is not in scope for this scheme. Before I hand over to Catherine, I would like to touch on how we are assessing the applications submitted to this scheme. We know that some review processes can stifle interdisciplinary approaches in that referees who are only confident about one discipline will consider the whole proposal as flawed if, part, if that part is not cutting edge. Referees can make judgments on the entire proposal without understanding the synergy and importance of the interdisciplinary aspects. In monodisciplinary panels, such as the individual council responsive mode panels, interdisciplinary research is often deemed to be out of scope because part of the application does not fit within that research council remit. Therefore, we need to think about different approaches to assessment of interdisciplinary research without creating additional hurdles in the assessment process. So both stages of this new scheme will be assessed by members of an interdisciplinary assessment college with no external peer review. There are several reasons for this decision. There is a risk that applications can receive a death by a thousand cuts in external peer review, because as I have just said, the proposals are viewed through the lens of single research disciplines and the excitement of the whole project can be lost. We are also mindful of the burden on the research community in using external reviewers when we don't know what is a steady state of demand looks like yet. These reasons provide a good opportunity for UKRI to pilot this type of assessment process. In May 2023, we held an open call for college members that opened alongside the announcement of the outline stage for round one. It was open to everyone with experience of interdisciplinary research and we were looking for people from all sector backgrounds, including academics, industry and public sector and also at different stages of their careers and from across a range of roles needed for successful interdisciplinary research, such as research professionals and technical roles. We were looking for applicants who understand and have experience of interdisciplinary research, either through un directly undertaking interdisciplinary research or supporting interdisciplinary researchers. 
and we had an extremely positive response from the community. We're up with over 300, over 13, 1300 applications and we appointed around 300 members, including approximately 70 members of the chair pool. All appointments, appointed college members have a high level of experience in working on or supporting interdisciplinary research and the college membership reflects the breadth of disciplines and subjects across UKRI to help respond to the potential demand and breadth of the applications. We've been working with the college, providing training specifically to support their approaches to assessing these interdisciplinary proposals. And we've been fortunate to have Catherine working with UKRI and providing this specific training. Having a specific college experienced in working on or supporting interdisciplinary research and specifically trained to review these applications should mitigate against the problems of assessing interdisciplinary research. So I'm now going to hand over to Catherine, who's going to go into some more detail on the definition of interdisciplinary research. Thank you, Alex. We're now going to explore in a little bit more detail what we mean by interdisciplinary research in the context of this specific call. Now, the cross-council uh, responsive mode call is using the REF 2021 definition of interdisciplinarity. And this is the definition that was used by the Interdisciplinary Advisory Panel. And it highlights the um, need for significant interaction between two or more disciplines. And it talks about integrating research approaches. Now, there are many different definitions of interdisciplinarity, but what distinguishes them all is this focus on integration. So let's drill down into that a little bit more. This is a definition that uh, is quite widely used within the scholarly community uh, from the National Academies of Sciences in the US. Again, you can see that it focuses on a mode of research that integrates information and it talks about the different types of information. Significantly, it also highlights the fact that this research can be conducted by either teams or individuals. Now, in the context of this call, it's most likely that this will be a team-based effort. What are we integrating? This quote indicates that we might be integrating a variety of things. It could be information, data, research techniques, research tools, or it could be on a more theoretical level in terms of integrating perspectives or concepts that different disciplines bring. And why are we, why are we conducting interdisciplinary research? Again, there are many reasons why people undertake this type of research. And this quote highlights that it can either be to advance fundamental understanding within the knowledge base, or as is more frequently the case, to solve problems whose solutions are beyond the scope of a single discipline. If you're looking for further information, there is plenty of literature, and I would suggest uh, Klein and Vienni Baptista, and we have the references at the end. If we look at the literature, then there's uh, some in information about what constitutes good practice in integration. And Christian Paul tells us that good interdisciplinary proposals will explicitly state what the applicants mean by integration um, and why this is the right type of integration given the purpose of the research. Conversely, poor research proposals will see integration as something that happens automatically by itself, simply as a natural byproduct of bringing scholars together to work on the same topic. There are different aspects of integration. So you should be asking yourself, what is being integrated? Have you explained that in the proposal? Have you explained why an integrative approach is necessary? Have you talked about uh, the nature of that integration, what form it will take, how it will be done, both at an intellectual knowledge-based level, but also from organizational management standpoints? And you're also asked to convey to the evaluators a sense of how prepared the participants are to undertake this type of research. Uh, this information is taken from a blog, the I2S Insights blog, um, where there are many examples given of different types of interdisciplinary research. So what you should be asking yourself in the context of your preparations for this proposal what do you want to achieve through this interdisciplinary collaboration? 
What are you and the other partners bringing to the collaboration? What kinds of collaboration will this project involve? Is it between different disciplines, different fields of research, different institutions, different sectors of society? Now, obviously, within this call, the focus is on bringing different disciplines together. But the real question you should be asking yourself is whether this research problem, this research question, truly demands an interdisciplinary approach. What are the evaluators looking for? They want to know that the research problem has been jointly formulated, not simply produced by a principal investigator who's then brought in a few uh, additional disciplines to the problem. So we're looking for an integrative approach from the outset. And this is often described as being a co-creation approach. And we'll talk a little bit more about reciprocity in a moment. The evaluators are also looking for a research design that's been driven by the research topic, not simply by the interests of the disciplines involved. So we're looking for some justification that the research questions demand an interdisciplinary approach and an interdisciplinary research method. The evaluators will also look for a plan for the, the, the human side of the collaboration, um, looking for information that the applicants have paid attention to, the necessary additional resources that will be needed in terms of finances, additional time, the types of methods and tools that are being allocated to developing an effective research relationship across and between disciplines. Now, within the call text, uh, you'll see that these uh, indications, these aspects, map on to the different assessment criteria of vision, approach, and the applicant's expertise and experience. So you might like to consider these questions when you're demonstrating how your proposal uh, meets these three criteria of vision, approach, and the applicant's capabilities. What we've learned from the first round from speaking to evaluators is that the strong applications to round one were clearly articulating an interdisciplinary research challenge. So this interdisciplinarity was built into the project framework. The applications were very clear on the research methods that were to be used and in explaining why these research methods or these combinations of disciplines might be innovative. The strong applications uh, demonstrated clear mutual benefits to the various disciplines, and they presented a well-integrated team of researchers and clearly demonstrated how those teams would work together. It was clear that the, each member of the research team had had specific contributions or expertise to offer. In contrast, the weaker applications to round one did not explain how the proposal was co-created by researchers from the disciplines involved, nor did they indicate the importance of co-creation or co-design in addressing the research challenge. The reciprocal benefits to the component disciplines were not obvious or not sufficiently explained, and there was an absence of different disciplinary perspectives. So the, the different disciplines were something of an add-on to the main discipline in these weaker proposals. Similarly, the disciplinary approach was quite siloed. What evaluators were seeing were multidisciplinary and rather than interdisciplinary proposals. So this key element of integration of different disciplinary perspectives was missing. Finally, the weaker proposals often fail to address uh, and acknowledge the very real challenges that interdisciplinary working can bring across disciplines and had not uh, provided sufficient indication that the teams had the ability to work together and address these collaborative challenges. Now, finally, we would like to provide some clarity on what the call requires in terms of reciprocal benefits to the disciplines involved. What do we actually mean by reciprocity? What we're looking for is some indication that there will be a lasting impact on the disciplines contributing to the research. This term reciprocity does not necessarily equal, uh, imply equal benefits in a quantitative sense. 
But what we're looking for proposals to demonstrate is that the contributing disciplines have gained something significant from the collaboration, something lasting, such that the discipline's knowledge base has been changed or transformed by working with other disciplines. So can you demonstrate this? Can you give perhaps a specific example uh, rather than some, some vague aspirations of, of lasting impact? Might you be able to give an example of how a discipline or a researcher within the collaboration will be able to apply this new knowledge, and that might be new methods perhaps, or new methods of data analysis to their future work on future research challenges and research topics. Now, there are various resources that will help you uh, in building your, your justification for this research proposal. The Shape ID Toolkit uh, provides a gateway to a significant body of scholarship on interdisciplinary research and includes a number of, of signposts to uh, tips and resources and reading lists um, that you might find useful. In particular, I would draw your attention to some of the reflective questions that you might consider if you're thinking about engaging in collaborative research. And there are also some very short top 10 tip guides for writing interdisciplinary research proposals. Uh, for those of you who want to dive a little bit deeper, uh, then I've included some of the references that I've mentioned. And I'm now going to hand back to Alex, who will uh, provide some further information about the call details. Thank you, Catherine. Finally, before we end, I would just like to let you know where you can find some further information. So we do now have a scheme webpage on the UKRI website. Here you will find information on the Interdisciplinary Assessment College, the scheme details used in round one, and some guidance documents for applicants and host organisations and the key dates for round two, which will then open in September. So further information on round two can be found on the pre-announcement page and more details will be published on the UKRI funding finder when it opens on the 2nd of September. We will go through this information in a webinar, which you can attend either on the 5th or the 11th of September, and that will provide the opportunity to ask us any questions you have. A recording of the webinar and a record of the questions and answers session will be published on the call webpage. You can contact the Interdisciplinary Responsive Mode team on the email address here, but we will not be able to provide further details on round two until it is published. I would just like to say thank you to Catherine for joining me today and her invaluable support to UKRI with her insights and experience of interdisciplinary research. So thank you very much for listening and we hope you found it useful.